thousands of students that just graduated from uh, junior high school, they now have to be placed into senior high schools for the next academic year. And for many of you who perhaps may be having difficulties with the schools that you have been placed in, uh, based on what well, you think you may have had good grades at all, what really is the explanation? For, but for those of you who already have good pl schools in which you've been placed, how is all this being done? If you're a parent who is worried, we're here to help you do a lot more discussions. We have Kwesia Abankwa in the studio, and Nochi. And um, thanks for joining me, Mr. Anochi. Thank you. Okay. Uh, and he is with the Computer Selection and Schools Placement System. Yeah. Oh, okay. Computerized. Computerized School Selection and Placement System. Right. Uh, how, how many students are you placing this year? Or have you placed this year? Uh, Why are you still placing? Good morning. Once again, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, this year, we had in the region of 438,000 candidates sitting for the BEC. And uh, we dealt with three main categories of students this year. The first category was those who actually sat for this year, sat for the exams this year. The second was those uh, who couldn't go to school three years back. So we gave opportunity to those who completed last year, 2014, 2013, and 2012. If any of them couldn't go and wanted to come back this year, we opened the window for them. And the third category was those who wrote the BEC for the first time, the private candidates. You know, way back in February, we gave the opportunity to private BEC candidates. So we also gave them the opportunity to come on board. So in all, we've been able to place almost 98 to 99% of those who are supposed to pursue senior high technical and vocational education. Okay, so at the end of the day, is to make sure that people get satisfied or, uh, and all that. But we know that you've done, is it the second round of placement? First yeah. batch, second batch? Yeah, we've done the first and the second together now, and we have released all of them to the general public. Some, stu some, some students and parents have not been happy. Why? Happy may be relative, I don't know. <laughs> because, uh, well, just everybody... because sometimes they were yeah. envisioning that certain schools they chose, they would have exactly. been placed. Exactly. But uh, you, you and that I know... That one mechanics, how does it work? Yeah, you and I know that for this system that we are using, it is purely based on merit, and uh, everybody would have wished he or she would have been placed in the first choice school. But uh, uh, the first choice school that you have chosen, somebody to have chosen it. So definitely it will be about competition. You and I will have to compete to be able to get to the program that we want to do in that particular school. So uh, we give the students the opportunity to choose at least four schools. It's composed with four. You choose four schools. And uh, your first, your second, your third, and your fourth. And each school must go with a corresponding program. So if you choose school A, you must choose either science, general arts, business, agric, technical, home economics, or visual arts. You must choose one of them if the school does that program. So when you choose, we will just put you all there. So for instance, if about this year we had in the region of 12,600 candidates choosing Wesley girls alone, and they will be able to take, or they've been able to take only about 400 candidates. So you can imagine that huge number, and we are picking only 400 out of the 12,000. And uh, if- Three girls. No, Wesley Girls. Wesley Girls. Yeah. Only 400. Yes, 400. Countrywide. Yes. Asamaba. That is the maximum number they can take. Even that one, we have pushed them a little. And let's say, averagely, how many, let's say the top schools, yes. averagely, each of the schools, if let's say 400, they can take, or 300, uh, how many, uh, 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 what percentage of students or candidates tend to pick, uh, choose them? Yeah, averagely, if you look at Than the, the, number they can the take. single sex schools, mm. the girls' schools, mm. for instance. Their intake is very small. But the minimum a girl's school takes is around 220. That is St. Rose's. And the number that chooses St. Rose's every year is in the region of 8,000 to 9,000, between that figure, every year. <laughs> yeah. You see, the issue we have now is that more of the girls, mm. especially from Greater Accra, are doing well. Do well and tend to choose the, only the girls' schools. When they are coming from the JHS level, they are mixed with, together with the boys. But when they are going to the senior high level, they tend to choose more of the single sex schools as compared to the main schools. So there's always pressure on the single sex schools for admission. That is where we had a little challenge. But as time goes on, we've been able to bring some uh, remedies to rectify that challenge. We are trying to open up the schools more. Because as I talked to you, we have some good schools over there, over there. But just that they don't have the names for people to even choose from. They don't have the pedigree, you say? No, I don't know the pedigree because the, once you and I know that there are top schools, 
have made the name maybe in the olden days already. But academically, they are equally good schools that are springing up. But candidates, because grandfather attended Achimota, mother attended so Achimota. So give me some of the names. Yeah, a, a, a typical school is Chemu Senior High School. In Tema. I know that yeah. school. It's, yes. been a, it's been around for some time. Exactly. I grew up but in Ashima, so if I know you, that. If you, if you check the number of candidates that choose it as first choice, Few. it's far lower than those who choose the so called top schools as their first choice. But you say you Chemu, they, they're doing well. Academically, they are very good. They are doing well. And some other equally good schools coming up. If you go to Kofiruda, for instance, Kofiruda Senior High Technica, Ghana Senior High Technica, if you go to the Northern region, we have Business Senior High School, Northern School of Business. They are doing fantastic. But you and I, if you check the statistics, the number of students that chooses their so-called top schools, it will amaze you as compared to the other equally good schools. That, that has been one of our challenges. But almost every year, we go to the junior high school level when they are doing their registration. We meet with the parents, we meet with the teachers, and explain some of these issues to them and ask them that these are the challenges we are having. These are the things, these are the situations. So when you are choosing the schools, these are the things you need to consider. Because we always uh, look at three people in choosing the schools. A parent will have to be present, a teacher will have to be present, and the student, him or okay, herself. Let me ask you, for example, mm -hmm. My teacher helped help choose a school for me because I wanted to go to my daddy's school at Cracker. Yes. And my teacher went to my school, Bishop Herman, and said it was a good school, so I should go to the school. Yeah. At the end of the day, yeah, it's been a very good school. And it's, yeah. uh, well, people choose the school as well. But it's about also the reputation, and, and sometimes yeah. reputation matter. Yeah, reputation matter, but then you have to go there on merit. Because you have to know that in going to the Bishop Herman, in going to the Accra Academy, you know that there are a lot of people who will be choosing that particular school also. So you must do well to merit that admission you are looking for. Don't rely on because your father was an old student, you get the opportunity to go there straight away. No, it doesn't happen that way. Because the Bishop Herman you have chosen, we have a lot of people. Now we give opportunity to everybody everywhere throughout the country to choose that particular school also. Okay. What about those in areas where the schools are located how do they get the chance to go to school as well because yeah. then it means that we're having a lot more people who do not live in the communities yeah. and they have very big schools in their community and they can partake what's yeah, the policy we, we give them opportunity also we we have what we call a 30 percent catchment area allocation so that those coming from that that's still in place it's still in place those coming from that area we give them 30 percent advantage if i should put it that way no Over, matter it, it, no, it depends it, should, it will still it, it based will on Academic we, performance. We have, we have a cutoff point for all those people also. So Within the catchment yes. area. Yes. So a typical example would be like if you, if you schooled in Cape Coast, you attended JHS in Cape and Coast. And you chose Infantipim. And you chose Infantipim. You, within the 30%, you must attain a certain raw mark okay. before you can go. If I am coming from Accra and my raw score is 430, 430, and you schooled in Cape Coast and your raw score is 400, and there's one person left to be placed in Fantepim, you there will be considered. So you're saying, like, for example, I want my two sons to go to Fantepim, mm -hmm. let's say in seven and subsequently, let's say nine years. <laughs> At the end of the day, you're saying those within Cape Coast will be given yeah. a lot more. Those preference. who school there, regardless of your religious background, regardless of your ethnic background, regardless of your gender, once you school in Cape Coast, you get a lot more preference. You get 30% advantage over anybody who schooled outside the catchment area of Cape Coast. Okay. That is how it works. So if you had raw score 400 and I get 430 and there's one space left in Fantipim, you'll you will be considered because, I'm in the because you schooled I within the benefits. catchment area. Exactly. Okay. I do understand that. So uh, why is it that even though you tend to do the education, mm -hmm. at a time when you're choosing the schools, mm -hmm. or they have even finished choosing the schools and that's, there's that very loud or period when they're waiting for the results and things, you don't continue the sensitization. So the parents then will have to accept whatever placements that they are, they are water giving. The, the, we do from January to the end of the, the, year. End of the year, we okay. do continuous public education. You know, we have district officers, we have regional officers, and we have we, the national officers. We do, we go to PTA meetings, we go to churches, and sometimes even when we get to the opportunity at funerals, we take the opportunity to educate. And uh, you know, every year we meet different kind of parents. If you are a parent and your ward is in JHS3 now, next year it's likely we will meet another parent who will not be bothered for the information this year. So we need to do a continuous public education, and we do. Just that, uh, even if you don't satisfy one person, 
it is them that the placement is not. For this work. year, what, what are the other, other complaints you're getting? Let's say, not necessarily com complaints, but the frustration that you're getting from parents. Yeah, the, the, the number one complaint or challenge we get from parents is that at all costs, I must be put at my first trade school. Regardless, some parents, you look at their results slip and you should, wow, you should know that this results will not get you to there. But sometimes you look school. at the results and you expect they should have gotten the school. Yeah, so when you, because that is the reason why we have given you, now we've even made access the raw scores to them. When you go to our website, you can print your placement form and you have access to the raw score you got. So you can easily compare it to those you competed with in the school you've chosen. If you, from, I'm sure from today or from tomorrow going, most of the schools will paste the list on their notice board. So you can go there. If you chose a Greek in Pop John Senior High School, you can just go and compare the raw marks over there with yours. If you made it, you see that your raw mark was beat. But if you didn't make it, you see that the, the last candidate over there marks is higher than yours, unless the person is coming from the catchment area. So you do all this to make sure there's transparency? We do all this. Because we give the students your raw mark, we give the same copy to the junior high school and we give the same copy to the senior high school so these three people all have the same thing and you can even test to get it so you're saying now it doesn't matter whether you go one one once 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 because you can get 65 over 100 in mathematics to get one i can also get 59 to get one depending on the dynamics involved so you, between you and i who will go to pope john senior high school if one person is to be admitted the 65 over 100 actually did better than the 59 over 100. So if we are taking one, on the results slip, you who got 65 would have gotten grade one. I who got 59 will also get grade one. So between but you and I. the 65 I, Exactly. A, that is why we uh, use the max. a higher one. Yes, that is why we use the max and not the grade you will see on the results slip. Okay. So as you continue your sensitization, uh, one other delegated authority or perhaps responsibility do you also give to the headmasters and also the parent-teacher associations of the various schools because they should have a lot more input to make they should be better explaining to their parents yeah we do and the headmasters for sure they are aware of all that what we do so far as the placement is concerned so when they also meet their parent-teacher associations because they are members of those PTA meetings they also take the opportunity and sometimes they invite we they invite us when we go there we also interact with them and it's it's an ongoing process we do it every now and then okay so now what levels of the placement is left you've done the first and second so yeah we've, we've as i talked to you now it's almost about 99 percent of candidates who qualify to be placed in senior high school who have been placed have been placed what we are going to do is uh one or two more pups and they may come uh some students may have health issues that we may need to bring them back to schools that are closer to their health institutions. Some students also had their parents being transferred all of a sudden, so we need to look at all those things. Those are the more paths we will, we will be doing from now on. But as of now, everybody will have to go to our website, get yourself a scratch card from either a post office, any rural bank, any agric bank, any uni bank, or any accredited internet cafe. You can buy the card, print your placement form, and proceed to the senior high school or technical. Does it mean that you get uh, some petitions for placement change? Because you're yeah, we do. Transfers, right? We do. We do a lot. We do a lot. But we, we so if they we, want to reach you, where do they reach you? Oh, you can come to our head office, the Ghana Education's head office, secondary education division. We have a division dedicated for secondary education. Where is it? It's uh, the Ministry of Education, the one behind the. That's studio. where you do the placement. Not necessarily. Well, that's the office. That's the office. Where you, if you want redress. If you want redress, you go. The placement can be even done in your office here. Okay. Yeah. Because it's electronic. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Thank you very much. Yeah. And um, it's always the int the internet, right? Yeah. As your now, website is what? www.myjhsresort. My JHS Resort. The resort, there's no S. It ends with only T. My JHS Resort dot net. My JHS Resort dot net. So when you get a card, it's even written on the card. Just but go you there. can also Google. You can also Google okay. and get it. When you Google computerized school selection placement website, it will pop up for you. You just if you have your pin code, your seri your scratch card number, just do it. Okay, please. We want you place. to name the website again. Yes, it's www dot 
my jhs resort t there's no s, no s. dot net my is m y r e s u l t dot n e my jhs resort dot net my yeah. jhs resort dot net all right thank you very much and we have had in the studio Kwesi Abankwa Anoche is with the Computerized School Selections and Placement System. And thanks for joining us. Thank uh, you. How also. many more students do you have to place again? Actually, uh, as I told you, those who qualify to be placed have all been placed, okay. as I talked to you now. Are there some schools that you don't have enough? Yeah, there are schools that couldn't get their full intake. And there are schools too that they were, we were able to just put a little more over. All depends on the number that chose those schools. Okay. And that is one of our major challenges. There are schools that people... So especially the big schools, so to the Ivy League schools. Yeah, the oversubscribed over. schools. The oversubscribed schools, they got a little over okay. their numbers. Yeah. Local Ivy League, you say. All right, thank you very much. And uh, we're taking a break when we come back. We'll be doing discussions on EM Talk. We'll be having in the studio Adam Mutawakilu. He is a member of parliament for Damango. And, uh, you know, he's a member of the NDC as well. And um, he... Uh, is going to the primary and that will be taking place on the 7th of November and also Kenneth Nyaku who is a member of parliament for and uh, we'll also be having a lot more discussions on the subjects as well so do stay on I'll be right back <laughs>